Yo, what is going on, gentlemen? So we got a video clip here today, and honestly, this one's been a bit of a long time coming, okay? A lot of you guys have been sending this to me, asking me to cover it again. And what this is, is it's Miss Lana Rhodes um, telling us what it means to be a trophy wife. And you'll notice a lot of times on this show, gentlemen, that we cover women who have just absolutely no idea what the hell men want. And this is one such example. So without further ado, we're just going to crack right into it. You know, I had a friend who was dating like a beautiful girl, a really hot model that like she's just a gorgeous girl, drop dead gorgeous. Every guy in LA would love to date her. And he would say that he couldn't be with her because she's had too many sexual partners and he only dated her because he wanted a trophy wife or a girlfriend. Wait, what does that sound like? I know that person. <laughs> okay, don't throw any shade here. <laughs> Oh, I, have no um, idea. I wanted to stay completely anonymous, but he said that. And so, what does how many sexual partners someone had before you have to do with you being able to be considered a trophy wife or a wifey material? It has a lot to do with it. Uh, you'll notice that these ladies will constantly defend their position. Okay, so what they want to do, right, is girls want to pull this crap where they can have their cake and eat it too. So what? I had fun with lots of dudes. That doesn't mean I'm any less of a, a wife material, girlfriend material, um, mother to children material. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. Okay, girls want to pretend as though... Um, their bedroom past does not matter in a relationship. It absolutely does, guys. They've done studies where they've taken girls who have different notch counts and uh, you know measured their success in marriage. And let me tell you, anything above the number of two to three drastically uh, reduces your chances of having a successful marriage. Now, you'll get the counter argument that says, Taylor, uh, just because our marriage ended, just because it was a, a divorce, doesn't mean it was a failure. Yes, it does. If you could not keep your man or if it fell apart, just in general, guys, that is a failed marriage, okay? But these girls want to go out here, have all their fun, get in marriages with dudes, oftentimes take half their crap and their kids um, and pretend like that was a successful marriage. Like, uh, it, that just blows my mind that that's kind of the state of things in 2021 where men just get absolutely screwed over and we're supposed to just accept the fact that, you know, these ladies can do whatever the hell they want and, you know, if we disagree, then we're not real men. You, you notice how that becomes the case, right? Like, if your girl has a high body count and you say anything about it, oh, you're just insecure. You're not a real man. I mean, I personally don't agree. I think a trophy wife is someone that is, you don't have to be a certain standard looks or even, I mean, obviously brains as well, but mm -hmm. I think it's how you treat that person and you would want to, yeah, it's yeah so you want to be with someone and how they treat you and how good they are for you, not because of how they look. So you can still yeah. be a trophy wife mm -hmm. and not be a model type yeah. or be the smartest, well, she, but you're a supportive, loving girlfriend. She wise. Do you just love how, like, with girls, like, who who do crap like this? Now, not all women, guys. Obviously, we have to put it out there for the not all police that come to my damn channel, right? Um, but girls oftentimes just want to change the definition to suit their needs, right? It's like, hey, a trophy wife, you know, it's all about being kind. It doesn't, it doesn't matter your past and, and stuff like that. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's like these girls just want to change the definition just to suit whatever they happen to be in the current moment so that they can be a, a trophy wife, right? You'll notice uh, Lana on the right and this one just just then disagreed with the fact that notch count should have anything to do with it. Um, it absolutely does. Like, guys, guys in general actually do care about that stuff and, you know, we'll cover stories which we might get into if you've got time on today's show, right? Uh, where, you know, ex-boyfriends return into the picture or she seems to have all of these guy friends and stuff like that. And a lot of men get gaslit into the idea that, hey, so what? She has a lot of guy friends. So what? She still talks to her exes. None of that stuff matters. You just need to be a good little boy, keep your head down, and hold the relationship together because that's your job as a man. Guys, there are a lot of men at the moment, if maybe you're new to this side of the internet, uh, who are just absolutely done with the relationships. And it's, and it's hard to blame them, right? We got guys not dating at all. We got guys just dating casually. Uh, but there's this huge push where a lot of dudes just aren't giving up the commitment anymore because these girls seem to think it's okay to change what they think that men want. 
okay now you know you, you'll get guys out there who will take you if you have a high notch count and stuff like that but in general it's a huge red flag and it's not going to do any favors to your relationship and it certainly doesn't constitute a trophy wife no matter how many times they try and change it it's like a beautiful model and so that's why he's saying oh i thought she was going to be my trophy wife but that's sort of what you said how they treat you is what i would say when he would say that to me i'd be like yeah she might have slept with more people than you liked before you dated her but since you guys have been together, she's been nothing but faithful and an amazing girlfriend to you. That literally doesn't, who, who cares? Like that, that doesn't matter. You have a no high notch count, you have a high notch count. It's not going anywhere. You know, you can, you can be the biggest saint if you want afterwards, but the fact of the matter is people can Google your name and see what you've done with your life. Now, girls like this, man, there's, I believe there's like other clips of this where Lana regrets her decisions and, you know, wants to get out of the industry and stuff like that and making all sorts of stupid claims like, you know, pretending like she's the victim in the situation. Man, uh, these women want to just kind of remove all levels of accountability from themselves. Guys, there are consequences to the, to the decisions that you make in the dating market, okay? You want to cheat on people, you want to go out, do the, you want to play manipulative games, you want to... You want to screw people over. You want to get a high notch count. You want to lie about it. You want to take away someone's kids, like all this kind of stuff, man. And people want to walk out the end and kind of, you know, consider themselves good people, right? And this is something that I don't think a lot of men understand yet. And, uh, you know, this isn't me throwing shade or anything like that. I think a lot of men are conditioned to be naive and conditioned to be, well, uh, as long as the men are kind of stupid, but useful, un unaware, but useful, Right, like society has this massive agenda at the moment to kind of keep men just absolutely clueless and to just say, hey, you know what? You should put up with whatever behavior your girl throws at you because that's your duty as a man. I, I guys, I cannot tell you, and I'm just gonna switch screens for a moment before we jump back into the video. I cannot tell you the amount of dudes I've seen in real life, right? Who are successful guys, they've got good morals, they care about their family and friends, and they're stuck in situations where honestly they should be leaving with girls who just utterly disrespect them and you know that guys that, that makes me incredibly sad like i'll be i'll be honest i don't like to see that i don't like to see guys who um who are fantastic people go through this crap and be expected to to deal with it now i know what we're talking about is trophy wives here guys but i just want you to notice how girls kind of shift the goalposts and expect p other people to just kind of fall in line you can you can call your you can say that this is what makes a trophy wife but at the end of the day that's not true at all Okay, but the problem is you'll get a lot of people who will watch crap like this, go out and, you know, believe it. Guys will take crappy d dating advice from women like this, and it just it just ruins everything for everybody, to be honest. So how dare you say that? Yeah, I mean, some men just can't get over the past, and they can't stop thinking about yeah. who was there before them, and it bothers certain people. But I know a lot of men that are secure in themselves, and they don't care about mm -hmm. the past. They don't even ask about the past. Like, that's how you... Notice how she correlates ignoring a girl's past terrible decisions with being a secure man. Did you guys catch that, right? So you're, you're insecure if you ask and if you're concerned about it, but you're secure in yourself if you don't ask about it and you don't care about how many partners she's had. See, what they're trying to do, right, is they're trying to take guys' you know, sense of wanting to have virtue, right? Because a lot of guys like want to be good men. Okay, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think a lot of guys out there, the majority of dudes watching this video right now, I think are good guys, okay? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to take men's desire to be actually good people, and then they're trying to put their agenda on it, you see? So, hey, if you hold a woman accountable, you're insecure. That doesn't make you virtuous, right? A real, a real man, a virtuous man would put up with all of the terrible decisions we've made and continue to continue to date us. You, you, guys, you guys see what I'm getting at here? Maybe I'm just going crazy, right? But Jesus. You know, it's a mature, strong guy when they don't ask you about your past in that I way. I think it's also not even about um, like having those issues. I think sometimes in a relationship where some guys just might get bored and they just want to bring something up from the past to use against you or even just mm -hmm. when they fight in general like it could be over bringing the wrong cup of coffee for your significant other and then that argument is just going to downfall to well you've slept to so many people you're a whore yeah. you know yeah just because they want to use something against you because they're running out of things to say or that's just how they feel at the time like you know yeah
that's just could not be further from the truth. I don't know what kind of situations this... Let, let's go look at her face so we, while we talk about this. I don't know what kind of situations this lady's getting herself into right here. Okay, but men don't... Like, what even is that? Where you go get someone a coffee or whatever the hell she said, right? And then the dude just goes off at you over your, your past. Like, I, I get the feeling we're kind of not, not really living in reality at the moment, okay? And now, look, guys will guys will bring it up over time, right? A lot of guys will kind of see you and, and then realize what you've done in your past and go, hey, wait a minute, I don't really like this, right? Or maybe they might Google your name and kind of figure it out because a lot of these girls, what they'll do is they'll downplay it because they know it actually harms their, their chances at a relationship and getting commitment. I don't care how many times these girls get on here and say that they're boss babes and they don't need no man and all this kind of stuff, man. Um, a lot of these girls will actually do actually care about the fact that they can't get commitment from men because that's what the trade is in relationships. A lot of people don't seem to understand this, but when you're giving up your commitment and your, your time for free and you're doing these things for girls who quite frankly don't deserve it, you're actually giving away a lot of your power in the relationship. Now, guys are told that's what makes you virtuous, right? That's what makes you a good man. If you're giving it away to people, if you're not causing issues, right? Because a, a real man wouldn't uh, wouldn't bring that up, you see? But I will say this, guys, like, um, it is very difficult to make the case that girls with a high notch count make good partners because they don't, okay? And a lot of relationships will employ because of it. Guys won't be happy with it. They're like, uh, everyone wants to kind of push this idea that men should just get into relationships, right? And it doesn't really matter what the men think. And if you have an opinion in a relationship, then that makes you a bad person. And, you know, you could view that as me, go like, uh, you can say, Taylor, well, that's just a bit, that's a pretty unreal. No, it's happening quite a lot, guys. Like, this is something that we see all the damn time on TikTok, on videos like this. This podcast that these three are doing right here, before they shut it down, it was massive, I believe, right? This, like, it was, it was a very big, uh, very big discussion going on. Things to say, or that's just how they feel at the time, like, you know? Yeah. So I think it's just, it's not fair to me. That sounds like a, nar like, not like a narcissistic person, but it's, you know, someone's history. I feel like before you date them, mm -hmm. like you kind of know them as a person and you should already be willing to accept what they have to offer you. Like you should never, yeah mid relationships start to use something against them that that's out of their control i yeah, think that's yeah. really well, not sometimes. fair yeah just out of their control guys so what that they did all these actions on camera and they made these decisions with men in their past it's out of their control like where is the accountability gentlemen like if you <laughs> and the, the thing is like notice how she tried to slip it there like i was saying a second ago these ladies will downplay the what they actually did right so they'll say Oh, you know, I did a bit of question. I did like, uh, maybe they'll say, oh yeah, I did some bikini modeling or something like that. And then, and then kind of ramp it up over time as the guy gets more invested. So they're less likely to leave. Like uh, guys, let me just play that again one more time. So you can see like how she really tried to weasel her way out of that. It was, it was really quite insane. I know them as a person and you should already, be, you know, someone's history. I feel like before you date them. Mm -hmm. like no, you don't. Because people don't always disclose it. You don't know you don't know a person's history before you date them. You, there's no way you could possibly know everything about someone before you date them. And let's be let's be honest about it, guys. A lot of girls who have high notch counts, they don't tell you, right? They'll be like, "Oh yeah, I've had you know, I've been with four dudes in the past like f six years, and those have been serious relationships." Like that's those are the kind of answers you'll get from girls, right? Oh, I've been with only the, I've only been with a handful of dudes, and they were all long term relationships, or conversely you'll get something like oh yeah i never really i never really uh have any i don't have relationships and stuff like that i've been single for five years when girls say they've been single for five years and they want to like say this stuff guys they're, they're omitting the truth they're leaving the truth out and a lot of times they're just straight up lying about their notch count and stuff like that like I i'm telling you man girls girls will absolutely lie about this stuff very very commonly like you kind of know them as a person and you should already be willing to accept what they have to offer you. Like you should never yeah. mid relationship start to use something against them that that's out of their control. I yeah, think that's yeah. really well, not sometimes fair. What can happen is obviously I've experienced this a ton because of my past. Guys will be fine with it at the beginning. Then as those feelings start to develop, they start getting insecure and mm -hmm. jealous. The more in love with you they are, 
and then they start questioning they start going and watching the stuff and then they start questioning you about it and they just get very insecure in themselves and so i've I yeah guys insecure right and notice how she says my past as if it's like something that happened to her not a conscious decision like the the, the self-victimization like these people are professional victims i would almost call it right where every every situation if it doesn't benefit them it's got to be a, the matter of, okay, well, it happened to me, or this was in my past, or you, you should accept me, right? And if you don't accept me, then you're insecure. This is the kind of crap I talk about on this show, gentlemen, where, you know, we, we talk about manipulation a lot. And I think, I think that manipulation is something that um, is really important for men to understand, just because this crap is incredibly subtle. Right. Well, for a lot of guys who, who don't really know what's going on here, maybe you, maybe you're new to this side of the Internet. Maybe you don't know much about about female nature per se. Right. Um, a lot of guys will get themselves in this situation and not really understand how they're being manipulated. Um, but, you know, I've said on this channel multiple times, guys, girls are way better at this kind of stuff, like using very vague language and, and shifting narratives and stuff like that to make them be perceived a certain way. We as men, guys, <laughs> we're pretty bad at it, to be honest. Like our, our communication is a lot more um, upfront and we tend not to beat around the bush so much. And, and, you know, there are guys out there who will victimize themselves and manipulate for sure. But man, girls are way better at this manipulation than dudes are. And guys get screwed over, uh, screwed over by this all the time, especially, you know, going ahead into, into um, family courts and, and all this kind of stuff. Like the amount of gaslighting that goes on is kind of unbelievable. I've even like had that happen with myself as well, where I'm super cool at the beginning of a relationship, then mm -hmm. maybe something happens or just like those feelings develop. And then you sort of just become like the love sometimes makes you act in a way that you wish that yeah. you didn't. I've definitely been like that. Mm -hmm. I've been in relationships where I'm like, I don't know why I'm picking this fight today, but yeah. <laughs> back to being like that, that right there, who is this girl back to being a that thing right there that she just said about i don't know why i pick fights sometimes i'm telling you man like you can choose to not believe me here if you want that's that's up to you guys but man girls girls if they don't have some form of chaos or something going on guys and i'm you know kind of quoting ams here they make the chaos if they don't have it you, you ever notice how when everything's going smooth and, and smooth sailing and things are going well in your relationship she'll just start fights about absolute crap right and it, to those of you in long-term relationships or who have been in long-term relationships watching this video right now yeah, um chances are you'll know what i'm talking about right here where everything will be going smoothly and then she's going to pick a fight over something so irrelevant that it doesn't even matter and you're just sitting there stunned like what the hell is even going on Man, girls with, will carry a lot of, and I hate to use woo-woo language like this, but um, they'll carry a lot of negative energy with them, guys. And you know, it, it's it's got to it's got to feed and it's got to grow. If, like a lot of men are good guys, like I said earlier, and and a lot of girls can't handle being in a relationship with a good guy. They've got to have some sort of issue going on. There's got to be something creating drama. And this is why these ladies will be out here with in relationships a lot of times with dudes who quite frankly don't give a crap about them not only because they might be attractive or something like that but the dudes create drama and you know emotional relevance and, and all this kind of stuff like girls get hooked on not just positive experiences gentlemen but negative ones too trophy wife i know we didn't intend for this topic to go on the route of past sexual partners mm -hmm. But do you guys think that I should, a lot of people tell me, oh, you'll never be married. Why would anyone want to date you? Do you think I should be excluded from ever being considered a trophy wife because of my past? No. What do you guys think in the comments, right? Just just type up a comment, guys. I'll give you a couple seconds. Do you think that, that, that Lana Rose should be excluded from being a trophy wife? Yes or no? All right, and I, I want you guys to leave your thoughts below. Um, and that couple of seconds is up and my answer is absolutely she should absolutely be excluded from that pool not not as i would not hesitate to exclude her from that pool okay a lot of these women want to go out here and say so what i have an of which you know stands for a particular kind of lewd site right so what so what i've done all these things in my past um i'm still wife material you don't get to decide that generally speaking uh, the men do decide that what makes you a what makes your wife material and what makes you not you don't get to decide with your group of you know two other buddies here on a table who obviously share the same opinion as you um you don't get to decide that the men do 
they get to decide whether they commit to you. No, because it once again, like I had mentioned, you know, the concept of trophy wives is more focused on the man than the woman because it's in their eyes, it's like a possession, it's a prize that they value mm -hmm. and something Yeah, almost like a trophy, right? Something desirable and you don't have to be the hottest girl, you don't have to be the smartest girl, you don't have to have a certain past. It's they it's how they view you, you know. So as long as you're the best version you, of yourself. How you value yourself. That's yeah, what I was it's how you value you, yourself. If you Holy hell, man, how wrong can you be? <laughs> how it hey it doesn't matter all of these other things what matters is you value yourself i mean guys i feel like when we watch these videos what we're actually doing is we're just slipping out of reality right we're not even we're not even living in reality right now and just because you value yourself and you say you value yourself which you don't if you've if you've done these things in the past that doesn't make you a trophy wife that excuse me that absolutely does not you know, you can sit there and say, I value myself, so therefore that makes me a trophy wife. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't. So, you know, you can try and switch up the definitions all you want, but that's just some, for lack of a better word, guys, that's just some absolute clownery, isn't it? My goodness. It said in the book that we read, Why Men Love Bitches, it said if you value yourself as a prize, they will see you as a prize as well. For example, in the past, I've said a girl cannot be the prettiest on the outside, but if a girl comes up to me and she's like, damn, I'm so hot. I'm the hottest girl in this room. I'm going to double look at her and be like, is she the hottest girl in this room? Because yeah. she really believes it. Yeah. What the hell was that, man? I don't know about you, gentlemen. You know, leave your thoughts below. But if a girl says that, honestly, she just dropped a few points from wherever the hell she was at. You know, this is thing called being humble. I, I don't know where the hell that's gone. Um, but it seems to have gone out the window where you can be an attractive person. But the, you know, you can lose that when you open your mouth and you say some dumb stuff like that, right? You can, you can walk around. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a bad, I'm a boss babe. I'm all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Generally speaking, man, guys don't want girls with attitudes, you know, like just some, some peace and quiet, maybe, you know, enough of this, this boss babe stuff and how you feel about yourself is what matters. No reality is what matters. Like it's, it blows my mind, gentlemen, that, you know, in, in 2021 uh, guys. So if you didn't know this, uh, this kitchen that they're sitting in right now, it's a, it's a set, right. Where they, um, where they used to run this podcast, I believe they shut it down in like the last couple months or something like that. Um, but like, it just, it amazes me that this platform can get so big. Like this, this channel, I believe at the time was, you know, far bigger than ours, um, and and this stuff was just being taken as fact apparently yeah so if you believe you're a prize and they should be working to be after you and that you're the prize for them they will start to believe it too yeah that's what i was gonna say is you shouldn't let someone else tell you you're a trophy wife if you know it and you believe it in yourself that you're a trophy wife then people mm -hmm. are gonna start looking at you and be like I'm damn a, like I'm a, i want her she's mm -hmm. a trophy wife I'm i need a trophy her next wife to me. right now yeah goodness gracious me man that is just something else isn't it that is just so I can be whatever I believe myself to be apparently in 2021. You know, guys, this kind of these kind of videos just really highlight. I'm just going to move my character in the center for a second here while we talk about this. Guys, make sure to drop your your thoughts to this particular video. OK, I want to know what you guys think. When I watch stuff like this, I just see a huge like these girls think that they set their own value and the market doesn't. You know, your audience is men. You want to get married, you have to appeal to men. You want to be a trophy wife, you have to appeal to men. That's like me going to a market with a product, right? And saying, oh, I believe it's a different product and people should want it. Therefore, it makes it valuable. That's not how it works. People decide, you know, people don't have... To... Let me just use this, this channel that you gentlemen are watching right now, okay? You guys don't have to watch these videos. And if you don't want to watch these videos, like if, if all everyone hates my videos, it's not another person's fault. You see, you know, it's not, it's not, if you guys don't watch my videos, that doesn't make you insecure. It doesn't make you less of a man. It doesn't make you stupid or anything like that. Maybe you just don't like my videos. Maybe I'm talking crap, right? Maybe you shouldn't like my videos, but these people want to pretend as though they set their own value. No, that, that's not how it works. You want to go out there and you want to get married to a quote unquote high value man. Like all, all these ladies are talking about these days. It's like, you actually have to bring something to the table. And I think that that's something that's just really lost at the moment. Uh, but gentlemen, we're going to be wrapping up today's show by jumping into a couple of Reddit stories that you gentlemen have submitted. So I'm going to momentarily 
uh, pull them up and, and see what's on the case. So I want to thank you guys uh, if you've made it this far. And without further ado, we're going to be jumping into uh, some of the stories that you guys have sent in. Uh, and guys, if you're going to send stories, uh, send them to my email, uh, mrfiend11 at gmail.com and just link the uh, the Reddit post preferably because their formatting is, is really good for these videos. But without further ado, let's jump into this first one. It is titled, I think I'm going to kick my girlfriend out of the house. This is going to be a long one. I'm sorry in advance, everyone. Sad face. I'm 22 and my girlfriend is 24. I just bought my first home a year ago and she's lived with me since. Congrats, man, for the house. Uh, we've been together for three years and lived together for a year before I bought the house. Everything's been fine or so I thought until this week. So a few months ago, my girlfriend got a physical done for her job. Her doctor told her that she's obese and she needed to lose weight. She was very upset about that comment, as you would expect, and began to diet and work out. Doing that is rough, so I began to do it with her so she wasn't alone in eating healthy and I'm eating fast food. I lost a ton of weight. I wasn't overweight to begin with and she stayed the same and was just getting mad at me over it. So I asked her if she wanted some advice and she said yes and I explained that your body needs to be in a caloric deficit in order to lose weight. She was just eating too much and but it wasn't my place to say that. Oh boy, did that make her mad. Fast forward to last week, I went to move her car and I saw McDonald's bags stuffed between the seats. I grabbed it to throw it away and she walked outside and I jokingly said, did you get any for me? And she was livid, acting like I was calling her fat, which I have never done once. Mind you, she was between jobs and I lent her some money for gas to get through the week and she spent it on fast food. Goodness me, man. That's crazy. So this is where it gets crazy. What we... <laughs> Okay, and to the point, I'm going to end this relationship. Her friend from out of state was going to stay with us for the long weekend. I was home one day and she didn't realize I was uh, home and she was on the phone with her friend talking about how I call her fat and found the food in her car and how I'm an a-hole. Like I said previously, I have never made a comment about her weight. Her friend goes, yeah, you need to stand up to that D. Yeah, that hurt a lot. I ignored it and didn't say a word. I didn't talk to her for a couple of days and I was in awe that she could talk about me like that. So then her friend comes in, her friend gets uh, intoxicated and kept saying things like, wow, you're an a-hole and this is why your girlfriend uh, doesn't mess with you which these things obviously stem from their crap talking conversations about me. So again, my feelings were seriously hurt. Fast forward tonight, I booked us a trip to this event to the, in the big city near us, only to find out two hours before my girlfriend tells me, yeah, we're going to a concert instead, so have fun tonight. She left me high and dry. There was no invite, no nothing. So when I made plans to go out with my friends to the bars, she got mad as hell because she's not with me when I'm out. She gets so insecure about me being around other girls. Now she's acting shady with how she's texting me and how she's acting at the concert. I'm not accusing her of acting like a girl who isn't in a relationship, but she sure makes it seem like it right now. I really think I'm about to give her a little notice. Uh, I'm kicking her out of the house and calling it quits. My heart has taken a few, uh, a few hits in these past few days and weeks, and it's not worth it to me. Advice is always appreciated, gentlemen. You know, uh, these stories are really kind of, uh, they're not great to read, okay? But the silver lining to them, which I mentioned in a lot of videos, is it always makes me happy to see when the guys actually leave the situation, right? These girls want to pull this kind of behavior and make no mistake, he doesn't seem to be in the wrong right here. He even went to the to the gym with her to lose weight and tried to give her advice and, and be nice about all that, guys. And this is one example. This is a bit more of an extreme example where... Um, you can try to be a positive influence a lot of time on people, but that doesn't always mean it's going to work. Um, and it's important that you don't beat yourself up about it because a lot of times it's it's not it's not necessarily your fault. You know, it could be, right? Um, but if you're out there trying to be a good person and you're in a situation like that, guys, don't let other people fool you into the fact that, oh, you're hurting me or you're the a-hole and stuff like that because a lot of people will do that to you given the opportunity. Uh, but gentlemen, we are going to be cracking into to late today's last story, and uh, and then we will wrap up today's episode. So as always, guys, make sure you're leaving your comments and your thoughts as we're going through. Now, this one is titled, 
my and i'm a 27 so my 27 year old wife um and i'm also a 27 year old woman wants to bring in a man and i'm feeling pressured in to keep her we have been best friends since we were little i always had a bit of a crush on her when we were 16 i came out to her and poured out my soul to her i was shocked that she felt the same about me and we have been together ever since we got married six years ago and life despite all its pressures has been wonderful with her about the time the pandemic started last year, we had been discussing children and if we wanted to adopt or use a donor, etc. A few months ago, she brought up the possibility of bringing a man in to do the deed in person. We were both intoxicated and I thought it was just one of those thoughts, but then she brought it up again while sober. Over the past couple of months, she has been asking if I was ever curious about it. We have only ever had each other and she wants to explore and try things with other people. Yeah, you know, like grow as a person and you know spiritually develop and all that stuff which is just code for seeing a dude right i don't know what to do i was hoping this was just a phase or something but she is becoming more insistent we had our first real argument over it a few weeks ago and several more since she says she loves me but i need to let her try new things and she wants me to try with her our marriage isn't perfect but it's never been this stressful before she is literally my whole wife i a whole life excuse me i have no family all my friends are her friends if she leaves me i will have nothing do i give in will it stop if i let her do what she wants sorry if this was long also i hope this is in the right place edit thank you for all your messages i just got back from a long walk and i think i am ready to talk to her some more i got a mix of support and i will ready myself for it but i'm not going to push for the breakup just yet uh, we will have much to discuss before we make any decisions also to those telling me to not let another man take her i'm a woman married to a woman you know this is this is a, a funny situation and this is well not really but uh, you'll see a lot of people get themselves into situations like this where their partner wants to make the relationship open or something like that guys and what i will say is um you know don't uh don't let people do things that you're not comfortable with just because they might leave a lot of times when a situation gets to this point the relationship is already over right a girl wants to go out she wants to have her fun do all of these sorts of things guys and she still wants you to be there absolutely not but guys we're going to be calling today's episode there as always make sure you leave your thoughts and your comments as well and if you have any stories to submit stuff like that you can send it to mrfiend11 at gmail.com um, guys if you're interested in supporting the channel locals has a fantastic option for that and the link will be in the description but i have to be heading out of the house now uh, always great to talk to you guys and as always guys make sure you take care of yourselves and i'll be seeing you boys in the next episode Peace.